when should your child start lifting weights? I'm a father of four and a half year old and weight training doesn't necessarily have to mean external load. So to start with, think of exercises um, that revolve around their body weight. So a perfect thing can be learning how to do push-ups on a bench, learning how to, to squat their body weight, maybe squat to a chair, um, learning simple plank and hollow hole positions. Uh, I got Jackson, my son, involved in gymnastics at the age of three. Uh, the grip strength and coordination uh, that he's improved in tumbling, learning how to jump on the trampoline and also using things like the monkey bars has transferred in transferred into his ability into the playground so he now uses his grip strength learn it has confidence in climbing um, playground activities and things that he perhaps wouldn't have the confidence in trying or would get frustrated in the past how should training change from the age of let's say 13 to 16 so if you've been doing all those fundamental classes from ages three to seven and from seven through to let's say 13 you've done some basic training with either a parent uh, so for parents listening and you've done that with your child where they if you're doing some training uh, and it's a kid friendly gym and you just bring them along with you get them doing things like squats push-ups uh, maybe some dumbbell presses overhead um, anything or helping them with some chin-ups so they bring them along with you basically keep it fun uh, it's not too structured there's not a, like a specific program they're following you're just exposing them to um, a, uh, the weights room uh, and, and um, building their confidence in uh, like rope climbs and things like that. <clears throat> and then from 13 onwards is where we can start to, if they're responding really well to following instruction, uh, these would be my key tips on whether your child's ready to start uh, and should start weight training. So um, understand the type of sport your child plays. So if it's a contact sport, I would argue it would be more unsafe, particularly the older they get, the more intense it's going to get. So having some body armor around the trunk, shoulders to protect your organs, protect your neck from uh, head injuries, um, having some muscle mass, which we know resistance training helps. Um, so that would be one uh, perk. Also uh, learning uh, how to land, how to balance on one leg, um, building single leg strength, um, uh, building some hamstring strength, so um, some good insurance, good vaccine for protecting them from um, from 30 onwards. They're moving at a pretty fast pace, so building some good strength will also from prevent them um, from future soft tissue injuries like hamstring strains. Um, so that's where I would really starting to focus on now. In terms of guidelines, and then I'll demyth some of the common um, myths when it comes to resistance training, but for those that are um, in that age bracket, like I said, 13 plus, and they're now starting to follow a resistance program, uh, like our online strength, AFL strength and conditioning program, we have, I would start with three, two to three total body sessions. So they're not doing splits where they're doing a lower body day and an upper body day, um, like a power, bit, power lifter or a weight lifter or a bodybuilder. They're doing total body sessions. So we're hitting multiple muscle groups or using multiple um, compound lifts throughout the whole week. Um, and they shouldn't go for any longer than 40 minutes, the sessions. So we want high quality uh, movement. Practicing the technique um, and prioritizing technique and control and tempo over intensity and speed of the lift. In terms of key myths of uh, demything the, the strength training, um, common mistakes and common myths that are out there in the industry, reducing your flexibility. I've actually seen so athletes, especially young junior uh, footballers at the moment are incredibly tight. Uh, and that's not due to strength training. That's largely due to the increase in sedentary sitting down. Um, so by improving their um, amount of uh, quality movement that they're doing, it should improve their flexibility, improve their mobility. Ultimately, if you're fearful of um, getting tighter, you want to make sure you're doing dedicated stretching uh, and you're doing dedicated mobility work, and that can be fed into the gym program. Uh, but strength training does not reduce flexibility. Uh, dangerous growth plates, it's actually safer than um, than sport, particularly high-intensity sport um, like your basketball, soccer, football, rugby. Um, so don't be fearful of, of affecting their or st stunting their growth. Some other things to take into account and, and top tips on this topic um, would be 
the um, benefit of plyometrics. So if you do join the track and field team, um, getting exposure to plyometrics would be quite helpful. Um, making sure you're doing single leg strength, not just double leg, double arm exercises. So train unilateral. We'd be amazed at those that are really strong in double leg and double uh, upper body movements, but they struggle um, with unilateral work, with the stability and the control of it. So making sure at a young age you're getting good fundamentals by training single leg strength, single arm strength. Um, you're practicing coordination-based movements and um, progressing the complexity of those movements. So not everything needs to be more weight at a faster pace, actually change the complexity of the movement over time as well. That's more for the strength and conditioning coaches in there. Uh, they're at a, the athletes of this population at such a plastic age, they can adapt so quickly 